Hello and welcome back. Please like, share, and subscribe and consider donating so we can keep this content going. If you haven't yet joined the Brave browser, I highly suggest it. The link is below to sign up. Brave is an amazing internet browser that enables you to surf the web privately and earn, earn cryptocurrency while doing it. So now on to Dow Theory Part 2. So this module is a continuation of the philosophies behind technical analysis and market analysis. Uh, last time we discussed Dow Theory Part 2, and so today we'll be discussing the second part. This is the last part of our two short modules on the theory behind Dow Theory. So we'll quickly go over what we talked about in Dow Theory Part 1. Um, we went over the first three tenets we're doing the last three in this video. If you haven't watched the first episode, I would definitely go back and watch that. So as stated in the first video, uh, the Dow Theory is a set of ideas that were written as editorials in the Wall Street Journal um, in the 18, late 1800s. Many of the foundational tenets of technical analysis come from this collection of editorials. And it was in July of 1884, Dow Jones and company published an average based on the closing prices of nine railroad stocks and two large manufacturing companies. They believed that these were the strongest indicators of the overall health of the U.S. economy. So this was the first stock market average produced and its principles led to the creation of other averages such as the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and et cetera. It later changed to include more stocks and rail companies to better display market conditions. So now on to the fourth tenet. So the fourth tenet is that the averages must confirm each other. So this can be summarized as follows. So Dow considered the two most important economic indicators at the time to be the industrial and the rail averages, specifically the closing price averages on a daily chart, not intraday trading. He believed that there was no bona fide signal that could declare a bull or a bear market unless both of these averages gave the same signal. Thus, if industrials lagged but rail was steaming on ahead, whatever trend was happening prior is likely still going on. They each had to have the same move. It's when both flash that there's a change in the market sentiment leading to either a bear or a bull market. He didn't believe um, that these moves had to happen on the same day, but that the closer they occurred together, the stronger the confirmation. So this tool can be used for making educated decisions on trade timing based on national averages, each nation, commodity, and security. Um, has its own set of averages that can be used to help foresee changes in its individual market trend. So it's something to consider. And let me know below uh, what your favorite things to watch, what your favorite um, security is, and what type of averages you use to um, best predict changes in that market. So now to the fifth part. So the fifth part is that the volume must confirm the trend. So Dow recognized that volume was important in confirming and recognizing price signals. And he believed that as a trend gets stronger, volume should expand with it. Volume is the underlying support of a market trend. In uptrends, the volume should increase as prices move higher and decrease as prices fall and the opposite for falling prices. So the volume is an indicator of changes in market sentiment. Sentiment. So in one of our first videos, we discussed the concept of market action and how the market is made up of price and volume. Price is the leading indicator. Volume is the secondary indicator. And so think about it. When things are going crazy in the market, there's lots of price moves. Then this happens after the accumulation phase we, we talked about in our first part of the Dow video, or the first series on Dow theory, 
So everyone wants to hop on and speculate and make their quick bucks, um, but no one wanted to touch the thing in the beginning when volume was low, prices were low, and it wasn't moving much. So remember, uh, analysis of the market is analysis of mass psychology of the participants in the market, the buyers and the sellers. The changes in the volume let you know of changes in market sentiment. So this is an important indicator to pay attention to. And it helps you understand what phase of a trend a given market is in that you're watching. So, you know, as we talked about with market action, with price and volume, the faster things are moving, the more and more it's going to rise and rise and rise, or the faster it's going to drop. Whatever current trend it's in, the volume is going to confirm that. And you can watch for changes in volume to see if a change in the trend is coming so the six and so now the sixth part this one kind of summarizes itself um, so it's a trend is assumed to be in effect until a definite signal shows otherwise so this relates to the concept spoken in one of our first videos about Newton's law of motion and how an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Well, a, a trend is the same way. A trend, can, a trend tends to continue, um, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. So below is a quick example of this concept. So this is a chart of May 2017 to early 2018 of the Dow transportation average, which is in blue and the Dow Industrial Average, which is in red. So earlier we discussed that averages uh, must confirm each other. So the if one goes down, the other one must as well to show um, changes. So, I mean, a change in the trend. So there are multiple times in which the transportation average drops. And you may think that oh, it may be going into a bear market. Um, but the average for the industrials is still climbing. There's no change in the trend. So, and as you see, the transportation average continued climbing and going up. So use, um, find indicators and market averages that help you to, to show correlation with whatever commodity security you're trading and use those with this tool to your advantage. Now, in the next video, we're gonna go over some criticisms of, or not in the next video, next slide, we're gonna go over some criticisms of Dow theory and how it's not the most uh, timely or an efficient tool. I mean, it's an old tool. It's from the, I mean, it was first laid out in over a hundred years ago. So there's, but everything's been built on it. So just something to think about. So some criticism. So as I just said, it's an old theory. You can't deny its foundational aspects. The six tenets have on market analysis. So it's estimated that his theory misses around 25% of a market move before confirming a market trend. So it's not that useful for people trying to get in on the ground floor of things and even see the beginning changes of a uh, bull market going into a bear market because the main point what he wanted this thing to do was to identify and confirm strong and major market moves the uh, the tide not the not the waves and the ripples um, like we talked about in the first part of Dow theory. Dow theory part one. He didn't care about intraday swings or even intraweek swings. It was all about yearly changes and the long term market trend. Um, so consider this. I highly recommend continuing researching Dow and his theories. I mean, this was a very, very brief introduction. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that uh, you learned something. Let me know below. Uh, if you liked it, comment, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, let me know your thoughts on Dow Theory, and as well as your favorite um, market analysis tools. 
and theories. So in our next video, we'll start to discuss chart creation and the various tools that you can use to increase your knowledge. So this whole next section is going to be on charting. Um, we're actually going to start with the different pieces of the graph, uh, candlesticks um, line versus line graphs and such. So stick around for that in the future. Thank you for watching and have a great night.